Hello, this is Neil Jenkins from Jenkins Electrical Maintenance Services. Okay, um, beginning of April uh, 2020, obviously all stuck at home with all this self-isolating stuff due to this coronavirus. Um, spent most of today sort of tidying up in the garden and playing around in the sheds and digging some bits and pieces up. Thought I'd make a quick video um, just on general if you have any electrical faults while you're in, I'm just going to run you through some of the various old fuse boxes and stuff that we uh, tend to deal with um, show you some of the RCDs and things like that a lot of common faults are sort of RCDs tripping or um, MCBs tripping that sort of thing so fuses blowing so um, I'm just going to run you through a few bits I found some old boxes and stuff and I'll just run through what, what I've got Okay then, back again. Yeah. Right, so various boards that I found. Okay, this is one of the... Ooh. <laughs> That's it, camera's give, going away. Oh, come on. That's it, Tri <laughs> tripod's giving up on me. Okay, right, this is one of the more common old-fashioned boards that come across you. You get these, you get the various um, large fuses or you get these little small fuses in them. Um, these little ones are more of a, a solid fuse. They're more of a proper little fuse unit that's inside that. Um, where these ones are more of the, what we call the rewirable fuse. So obviously as you can see, looking closely, you can see there's some um, fuse wire inside it which obviously needs to be replaced and as you can see see there's a little screw at the end um, and what you have is normally if you've got one of these old units normally you'll have a packet of um, various types of fuse wire um, that's once it goes inside it you get the 5 amp 15 amp and then the 30 amp as you can see this is like a screw at the top and a screw at the bottom. Basically all you do is you straighten out a bit of fuse wire. You, if you wrap a bit of fuse wire around one end first, feed it up through, wrap it around the second one, tighten it up and then snip it off. And that is how you replace the fuse wire in one of these. And that'll get you back up and running again. Um, alternatively, um, you can also get these in um, like a trip switch type format where it'll have a little uh, switch on the front of it so obviously if they go then all you do is um, just flick it back up again basically just like a normal like one of the normal ones um, that's basically the in insides of one of these they're not very very good all these offer you is um, very limited sort of overcurrent protection um, don't offer you any fault fault protection at all so ideally if you've got a board like this i would thoroughly recommend um upgrading to rcd because especially the red ones will be a 30 amp most of these will be sockets um cookers things like that showers if definitely showers need to be on rcd protection and most sockets and stuff recommended should be on rcd protection as well okay so that's one of the older ones Again, we have these boards. These are again one of the older boards. This is uh, what we call a main switch, which again offers no fault protection at all. All it does is gives you overcurrent protection. Under normal circumstances, all these would be up. If if something was to happen, if you had uh, a fault on a circuit, then you, you'd get end up with one of these facing down like that. Pull it out, put the main switch on. <laughs> okay, so um, if you've got a board like this, if you have a fault on one of your circuits and something's not working, come and find it. The first thing to look for is look for one of these that's facing down. So if you have a thing, push it back up. If it flicks down again, 
then don't keep turning it it on um call, call your local electrician um because you've got more of a fault on that circuit um another thing you could find this like say if we've got things like says ring or sockets things like that if if one of these is is flicking down and when you put it back on it comes back down again another thing you can try is go around and unplug everything so any appliances anything you've got plugged in just go around and disconnect everything try switching it on again if it stays up then it's a fault with with an appliance somewhere so just slowly plug um, your appliances and things back in again until it trips again and then you know that that is your faulty appliance right. moving on so this one's a little bit more modern this is uh, an Emma one um, another name for these is contactum these um, you get these in various formats again you get uh, most of the sort of more modern boards um, are in this sort of format where they have um, <laughs> don't want to play fair <laughs> right you have a main switch again with a selection of circuits um where you'll see it most hopefully it should be labeled at the top of it and then you'll have oops, let me get this into view. okay so you have written at the top main switch and then you have rcd control circuits a lot of stuff that's on rcd will always be in green coloring again okay so again if you have a fault on this circuit if it's on the main switch side it'll be one of these all you've got to do flick it back on again if it keeps coming down again um if it's something on your lights then it could be one of your light fittings go around turn all your light sw switches off try this switch again if it goes on and stays on then you know it's one of the light switches then go around put the light switches back on just one one at a time until it trips off again and then you know that's one that you've got your fault on and you can get get your local electrician to come and sort that out for you um or if you can live without it just leave, just leave that light fitting off for the moment and we'll sort it out as soon as we can um again rcd control circuits so you've got your rcd control circuits this is a test test button this should be pressed uh once every six months to be test testing the circuits out and make sure that these are all protected by this rcd unit and it's all working correctly again if you get a fault on anything um this will normally be down these will, well, these don't normally go down unless it's um, a, a surge fault, um, or some some big power load or something that's sort of caused it to trip off. Um, with these, normally you can just flick these back on, and they'll go on okay. If it doesn't go on, then the other thing, if that flicks back down again, and you have a fault on these, switch all the circuits off that are labelled on the RCD. Put the RCD up first. If that stays up, great. Then switch these ones back on one at a time until if that trips down again, you know that's the circuit that is causing the fault with that. Again, if you've got sockets and things like that, um, RCDs will normally trip out where um, dampness, water and that, that sort of thing comes into contact. So, um things like outside sockets outside lighting uh kitchen appliances all that sort of thing get them all switched off or disconnected as much as you can try it again and hopefully it'll, it'll come on and power up and then you can go around and um sort of work out what is causing it okay move that out of the way. right this one is more of an old-fashioned um unit again your memora 2000 you get these in uh memora mk and all different ones these ones pretty much works the same way as the other one but with these ones there's something else to be aware of um i think mk do it as well and these mem ones do it um another one's names from is eaton 
um, these when these units trip these tend to trip I can't do it because it's not powered up but when I trip it it goes all, all the way down but normally if they're powered if the units are powered when they trip that will sit there in the middle so it looks like it's still on and I'm, I find this a lot I go out to a lot of call outs where people have said oh no it's not tripped it's still on but actually it has tripped it's sitting there in the middle so this is something to be to be aware of if you come to it push this right the way down and then push it all the way up again because what will happen is it will just sit there in the middle and it will it's it's actually disconnected the power but to the eye it looks like it's still on so that's um that's only sort of with these sort of boards that you that you get this Apart from that, everything else and all. So this is a few few units um, that we come across quite a lot and get faults and stuff on like that. Um, under most circumstances, I would definitely recommend upgrading to a new, to a new board if you've got any of these sorts of, of units in place. Get a, a, um, a new consumer unit uh, with surge protection, RCBOs. RCBO systems are much better. I'll explain it on this board, it's probably the easiest one to do it on. The difference between an RCD, an RCD controls a whole group of circuits, which again can cause you a lot of problems because you get a fault on one circuit, you end up losing all those circuits. Um, with the current 18th edition regulations, this, this is actually not allowed. So one, one circuit is not allowed to... Um, interfere with a, a group of circuits not allowed to leave it off so uh, a lot of the units we're using now are rcbo's where you have one main switch and then all these units have a little test switch either at the top or at the bottom of them um so they're actually sort of intertwined with an rcd and an mcb all in one unit and it's called an rcbo uh it's a much better system much safer and it's much more or less problematic. You, you get a fault on the circuit, you're only losing that one circuit. You're not losing a lot of stuff. Um, so again, yeah, so I recommend, uh, this is all we fit nowadays is RCBO units uh, with uh, surge protection. Um, and obviously make sure you're using a proper electrician to do the work. Do not try and fit these yourself. If you try and if you replace your units, everything has to be registered through building control or it can void your insurance. This is another thing that has come up a lot recently. People are not aware that your insurance companies now will void your insurance if you do not have the proper certification um, and notification through building control. Okay, take care. I'll see you soon. I uh, look forward to doing the next video.